Today I have a lot of wisdom for you. Yesterday I went with my mother to Chilca, to the south, and when I go to the south, I have plenty of time to listen to podcasts, so I'm going to summarize for you the wisdom of Michael Saylor, of uh, Jeff Godin, a, a lot of good shit in this, uh, on this episode. And also, I want to start by saying that the beauty of going to places out of Lima is that it helps you with the perception of things. There was this little dog, uh, maybe if you have seen my Tio Balta Instagram account, there was this little female dog that approached to me when I was in the car. And this female dog wanted to really be rescued by me. Quería ser rescatada. So, uh, as you know, I cannot take it to the house because I already have Armando. But I decided to go to the mini market and, and buy something for the dog. So I bought like, uh, some uh, dog cookies, some dog show. I gave it to, to this female dog. And you know what called my attention is that this female dog, esta perra, <laughs> she, she, eat, uh, she ate like a bunch of the cookies. But when she was full, what she started to do is she opened a hole on the floor, abrió un hueco, and she started to hide all the cookies, all the dog cookies there for future hunger, you know, para hambre futura. And that called my attention. It's like even this female dog can think in the future, even... The animals can project life, and there are plenty of humans that they cannot project their life. Interesting thing. But okay, time to get started. Before starting with today's wisdom, thanks to the sponsor, as always, inglesparacholos.com. If you want to take your life to the next level, you can send me a WhatsApp to my personal number, más 51-9890-23986. Time to get started. Let's start talking about the one and only Michael Saylor. Yes, the, the Bitcoin guy. Now... Why is it important to follow the Bitcoin story? Not necessarily because you want to invest uh, in Bitcoin. I already invest a little bit, as you know, but uh, I don't plan to keep investing. But what I'm trying to go is that Bitcoin is kind of the, how can I say, the thermometer of what is happening in the world. When crazy things are about to happen, Bitcoin spikes. When you have a new candidate that at least promise, that's the idea, right? that is going to change, to make things in a better or different way, also Bitcoin spikes. And now it's trading between $90,000 $90, and $91,000. Imagine how good it is that my $1,500 that I invested back then in the 22, in the year 22, now are worth it $9,000. $1,500, now son $9,000. So fucking good, right? But where I'm trying to go with this, is that Michael Saylor, as you can imagine, he's going to all the podcasts, he's jerking off, he's coming in everybody's face saying that he said that it was a good idea to buy Bitcoin. But uh, he, he said interesting things. For example, one of them was, he said that if you want to make money, just try to understand, figure it out. What is that thing that people will need in the future and buy it first? Simple. Right? What, that, what is that thing that is a scare? that is limited, that there is not too much, that you cannot print more and buy that in advance. I can tell you, that sounds simple, but it is the best way to make money. As he mentioned, and this is another phrase that he has, is, is doing is overrated, for real. Like people, they want to do a lot of things to make money. Sometimes it's do less things, but things that make sense. So that is one big one, is buy things that people will need in the future. And if you allow Uncle Balta to spin that idea a little bit, it's also offer things that people will need in the future. Start creating offers that people will need in the future. And for that, I want you to find trends. We were talking that um, with my people from Inglés para Cholos yesterday. And this Sunday, we will have a workshop. Vamos a tener un taller. And what is going to be the workshop about is small trends that are happening that we can take advantage of. Everybody is talking about AI, AI, artificial intelligence, yes. But what about all the parallel small trends that are happening right now that few people are paying attention? Those are the easier options to monetize. Uh, I'm going to give you like some, these are my little trends. I will tell you my little trends so you can check your little trends. But in my little trends, one that is like a no-brainer for Inglés para Cholos, for example, is this thing that they are doing a, a dock, un puerto. They are doing a dock here in Shanghai. 
a lot of tourists will come here to, to Peru and a lot of business people. Let's remember something. Even the Chinese people, they speak English because they have more access to employees, to better quality of employees if they do it in English than if they just do it in Chinese. And I can tell you, I have many Chinese friends and they all tell me the same. Successful Chinese people, they speak English. So all the business people that are coming here, plus the tourists, they are going to do also some things in Miraflores here in Lima. So the English is going to be necessary, mandatory. By the time that people pay attention, it's going to be late for the majority. The next trend is the community. In the community, uh, I just upload a video to my website, uh, English para Cholos, explaining why a community is important. But apart from all the benefits of the motivation, you have access to other resources and all the things that I could do like a full podcast about why it's important that you create a community and that you belong to community. The other uh, reason is because the publicity is becoming expensive. If you talk with most of the companies, the cost per click, the cost of advertising on Facebook, Instagram is increasing. Why? Because people, thanks God, it took time to happen. But people are realizing that the ROI, the return over investment, uh, when it's connected to publicity, is the biggest. You can get like, I don't know, you easily can make 500, 1000% return if you know how to run publicity. So people are doing as much publicity as they can. Therefore, the, the ROI is decreasing. The cost per click is going up. But that is another opportunity for having your community because the people who is in your community, they always they already trust you. So if you know how to offer good things to them, you save the money that you will spend in publicity. And another one that is also important is that um, for me, it's a big trend, is that people in many countries in Latin America and all around the world, they are trying to leave the main cities. It's like a pendulum. Always the pendulum analogy comes back. There was a moment where the cool people were going to the city. If you live in the city, you were the cool person. But now the cool people are going out of the city. And this is so fucking interesting because you can see how these motherfuckers are, are, are sending publicity to people who live in a small villages in the countryside, in the small cities, and they are offering them to buy their plot of land, sus terrenos, their houses, and with that money, these people are buying a small apartments here in Lima. So they are trading their big plot of land for a small apartment. Something even more interesting. They are trading their big plot of land for an expensive car. I was talking this with, I went to Chilca, as I told you. And I was talking this with, with many people from, the, from this uh, district or little city. And they told me that a lot of neighbors, they already sold their land. And with that money, they start traveling around the world. They bought expensive BMW or expensive Mercedes. Uh, and why, why is it so curious for me? Because these people always have been treated like, like less. People who live out of Lima, they have been treated like, like less than human beings uh, category. So when they see the chance to sell their plot of land and travel and buy a fancy car, they want to buy a status. But what they don't understand is that in their, in their attempt for buying this status, they are losing their biggest asset. <laughs> but, but the business people, they are motherfuckers. And by the way, that's what business people do. They always sell the status. And that's why I want you to do the same. I want you to reinforce your offer with a status. When your offer is connected with a status, People are willing to spend more money. Now, before jumping, to <laughs> that, that's when I come back from Chilka, it's the same. Always it's like my brain, I feel it's bigger. But well, coming back. So let's talk about uh, Michael Saylor before we wrap this topic. Uh, why people are investing on his company? Why people are buying micro strategy stock instead of buying Bitcoin? This is a very curious one because I was thinking the same. What is the deal with Michael Saylor? Why he so obsessed with Bitcoin? because he's getting loans and offer bonds to leverage his company to buy even more Bitcoin. So let's put it like this. According to him, Bitcoin will never disappear. So what he's doing is since now his company is worth more money, he's asking more money to the bank, more money to his people to buy even more Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin go up, his company go up, no 1x, but 2x or even 3x. 
So buy micro strategy is a leveraged way to buy Bitcoin. Not only that, also many corporations around the world, they are not allowed to buy a Bitcoin, but they are allowed to buy stocks in US companies. So it's, it's very curious how he handled this. You offer a leveraged version of something that is already volatile. And what he also do is he offer the chance that he can receive, receive your investments when sometimes the, even the Bitcoin cannot be accepted in your country, he offered his stock. So it's interesting how this guy is leveraging Bitcoin. So what I'm trying to go with all this first tip is buy first something that people will need in the future, create first something that people will need in the future, and also always try to use the, the, the trends and know how to leverage them. As I mentioned, many people want to go to live to other cities, to a smaller city. They want to escape the city. And I was thinking, at this time, I'm not good selling plot of lands, but I know how to teach people how to work online because I have been doing this since the 2010, even the, two, the 2008, I would say. So in my mind is, I'm going to include this in, on, in my system, Inglés para Cholos, teaching people how to work online. Because if you can make money online, you can go and live anywhere in the country or in the world and keep making money while living in a nice place. So that is the first point. Let's go to the second. But before continue, friendly reminder, más 51 2396. That's my personal number. And also I spread the word. Tell the people to go to Uncle Balta on Spotify. You know, now that I check, 11 minutes with 40 seconds, just explaining the first wisdom nugget. Beautiful. <laughs> um, let's go to the second one. Is this is from a um, this is from a marketeer, a marketero from a uh, UK, United Kingdom. Rory Souther, Souther, something like that is his last name. Rory Souther. He's a cool guy. He's a fat cool guy. He said this: the person who know how to target his or her audience is the person that is able to spend more money on them. And this is so interesting. And here we go back to the segmentation. This is why it's important that you have a niche. Uh, he was explaining this case of Jaguar. As you know, Jaguar is a, a cars brand, una marca de autos, Jaguar. So he said that they figured it out who were the customers that they want to target or the prospects that they want to target. And they were giving four days of test drive. As you know, if you go to a car dealership, you can test drive the car if they like you, by the way. You know that they allow everybody to do the test drive, especially from the fancy brands. But these people were giving the car for four days. So imagine they will come to your house and they will leave you the car. Hey, have the car for four days. And they realized that the conversion was very high. Uh, for that same reason, it's important to know who is your avatar? Who is the person that has a high degree of certainty of buying you the product? Because once that you figure it out that, you can spend a lot of money. I always tell you that Facebook uh, and Instagram ads are very cheap. It's a way to go to massive people. But when you have expensive offers, and I hope everybody here can tailor expensive offer, you will figure it out or you will find out that offering more time energy and resources to your niche people, to your avatar, is a better idea. And, and the question is, how can you find these people? Where are these people located? Uh, here I want to share with you some questions that you can ask. The, the first is, who is the person who needs you the most? Very simple, but it works. And I want to use the analogy of the Russian women. Remember, the Russian, uh, the Russian woman told me this. Why men love to date Russian women? Because they want to escape the country. So any man that offered to a Russian woman the chance to escape, the woman will say, hell yeah, I'm going with this guy. The same applies for business. Who is that person that really is craving yourself? Who is that person that if this person knows that you exist, they will please take my money. You need to find, you need to ask that question. Who is the avatar of person that needs you the most? And the next one is also, if you already have customers, that this is what I like to do. I like to check my favorite customers. My favorite customers, uh, what do they study? Where do they live? What characteristics, features do they have? And I insert that into the publicity. So, and also I try to look more people who go to similar places. So the question is, first, who is the person who needs you the most? Because this person is willing to 
to pay more and if they are willing to pay more and they are a high certainty of needing you the most, you can spend more time talking with them. Uh, in mind, if you start doing uh, publicity many times, it's going to happen that people that don't care about your offer, they will see your publicity and that's money that you are losing. But it's not perfect. It's not that you can say, I just want my publicity to go to people who really need me. But that's why you want to increase the certainty of knowing that you are targeting the right people. It's like trying to find a romantic partner, right? If you are trying to find a romantic partner, you're not going to spend time, you know, talking with women that you don't like, even though sometimes you just want to have sex. You want to spend more time with people that has a potential of needing your dick now or in the future. But you get the point, right? And by the way, a little tip extra here. The publicity, sometimes people get discouraged because I tell the people, hey, start spending five soles per day on publicity. And they tell me, Jose, I spent the publicity for two weeks and nothing happened. Of course, just two weeks. Don't be a piece of shit. People need to see you many times, many times. And there is a high chance that they say, this is a cool thing, but I don't need it right now. But in the future, maybe in one month, six months, they will need it. And they will remember you if they see you again. That's why you want to keep showing up. So that is the second tip. Is the person that know who is the potential customer, the person that have a better segmentation, can spend more money, more time, and can tailor better the offer. That is the second tip. Let's try to go to the second, to the third one. Number three is, um, this one comes from my boy, Alex Hormosi. He's one of my favorite business guru nowadays uh, on social media, on YouTube. You know what happened with this uh, business content uh, and money content? Is that a lot of times these motherfuckers, influencers, they tell you things that sounds good, but they don't apply. But as a business owner, I can tell you, Alex Formosi, everything that he said makes sense and is applicable. Is You can apply it. And what he was saying is that people always get distracted with the small problems. Always people like to fix the smallest problems because are things that they already understand. But the change, the evolution, the next level comes when you are able to fix the big, hairy problem. El problema grande y peludo. <laughs> you know, the big, hairy problem. Uh, um, also, I found out that it's not just fixing the big, hairy problem, but it's doing as fast as you can. Uh, and the order of the activities is important. Today, what was my big, hairy problem that I already fixed before this podcast? was uploading a video to my website, Inglés para Cholos, explaining the system. Uh, why I haven't explained the system before on Inglés para Cholos? Because uh, I didn't want, I, I wanted people who really, really believe in the system to enter in the first place. But after already four years, I think I can now explain you exactly what is the, the system about. So if you want to know how is the system, with all the details, go to inglesparacholos.com and there is a new video there. But coming back to the topic, that was the hairy problem for me today. It's not that it's a big problem, but it requires a little bit more of effort, right? I need to first uh, put my I need to put my clothes on. I cannot record naked. Sometimes when I do audio, I can do it naked. But when I do video, I have to put my clothes on. Uh, I have to do a nice script that is easy to digest, considering that people, uh, for example, here this podcast, I know that you are listening by doing other activity or like with your headphones. But when it's a video, sometimes people are going to look at it. So it has to be faster, but also giving all the content. And that was the hairy problem today. After that, I'm doing this podcast. If I do this podcast first, then I'm lazy to do the hairy problem. So, and you know the phrase, always eat the frog first. Um, focusing bigger problems, um, big problems, for, I'm going to give you my big problems that I'm fixing now. And you have to check your big problems. But my big problem, for example, is uh, finding good training partners. Thanks God, so far so good, doing good. Um, the other big pro and now sounds stupid, but a good training partner is a good contact at the same time. So that helps you not just doing your your fitness, but also in business. The website and trying to add new content. I will start adding more videos to my to my website. Uh, considering also that most of the people use the website from the phone that's true but checking more my analytics my analytics i was 
find it out that people who sign in to the program, they always at least check the website from their PC twice. So that's why I need to make also some long content there. It's good to check the analytics. And other thing that I'm doing is my studio. As you know, my mother bought a house out of Lima. So I'm building a third studio. So now I will have tres studios de grabación. So fucking good. Um, just before wrapping this, this uh, topic, is, is we need to focus in the big problems. But always ask this question first. Is, is this so is this problem within my area of expertise? Because if it's within your area of ex expertise, maybe you can do some research and you can just fix it, right? But if the problem is totally out of your area of expertise, you want to partner up. You want to work with somebody else. Because the last thing that you want to do is try to reinvent the wheel all the time. Figure it out problems that or somebody else already figured it out. Uh, if it's about my car, about my dog, about doing this studio, I try to find a handyman. Always, who has the expertise? Let's try to work with this person. You will save a lot of time. Let's go to the number four. We have just five uh, on this uh, podcast. To the number four is... Um, this one came from Seth Godin. Who's, who's Seth Godin? Is one of the biggest marketeers in the world. Looks like Uncle Balta. It's un calvo, I mean, he looks like Uncle Balta. But what the guy said really changed... No, it didn't change my life, but... It kind of allowed me to see something that whenever you feel, whenever you feel fear, miedo, whenever you feel fear, that is a good signal that you are challenging your limits. I can tell you, whenever uh, I used to go to the wrestling, a la lucha libre, I remember I was afraid. I was afraid of the trainer Cervantes. I was afraid of the trainer Pokis. Uh, when I was doing a Jiu Jitsu or submission, I remember Tony, Tony de Souza. I was not afraid of Tony, but I was afraid of his training plan because those were motherfucker training plans. And it's not coincidence that my fear back then in time was very connected with the intensity. When you start doing things with high intensity, now you will feel some fear, but this fear is a good indicator. Now, Fear sometimes can prevent you from doing dumb shit, of course. But uh, what happens is that we as humans, we have evolved a lot. And in our evolution, the amount of fear that we need uh, hasn't decreased. So many people are fearing things too much. Now, what people fear... I have already a podcast of this, but just g let me give you some ideas. A lot of people fear showing their expertise online. What is a big, stupid mistake? A lot of people fear selling. They want a company that sells for them. And we know how that things translate. A lot of people have fear of trying something new because they don't want to be judged by other people. Uh, but as always, as I mentioned, if we have transsexuals going to the streets, why you cannot just test your, your, your expertise? You need to be able to embrace fear. And when you are feeling fear, always ask yourself, Am I doing a good thing? Because if you are doing a good thing, just embrace that fear and keep going. Uh, before wrapping, you know, Uncle Valta, get excited. So this is going to be the last tip here. Is uh, always ask, what is you? who are you? What is your identity? And I, I'm saving this for the last part of the podcast, just for the real people who stay here. What is your identity? Uh, we always say that you are not just one thing, right? You are not just... Uh, a business owner, you are not just a fitness person, you're kind of many things at the same time. But we, there is a phrase, a philosopher who said this, your habits define your identity. So you want to remember what is your main thing to do. And in my case, I'm a business owner who also have a podcast. And why I need to remind that to myself, because everybody believes I am an influencer or a podcaster, and nothing wrong if they believe that, you know, and that's cool. But for me, I want me to remember that I am a business owner who have a podcast, a business owner who also have a, a YouTube channel and all the shit. Why your identity and you remembering your identity is important because that is going to allow you to organize your life around. If you organize your life around knowing that you are a business person, you will spend more time doing those type of activities. And one extra. This is an interesting one. I just learned this one talking with a friend today in the morning at the gym. This is an old guy. Well, old, old guy in my perception because he's not old, but he's, I think, 54, 56 years old. 
uh, he told me, hey, Jose, you know, I don't talk with my... No, he told me this. Because I saw him at the park with his friend from school. Uh, they they gather. It was like Sunday, I, I guess, 11.30 p.m., very late. And they were drinking alcohol at the park. And today he told me, these motherfuckers, they think they are still in the school drinking at the park. And I told him, who are your new friends? And he said, my new friends are the parents of my uh, my children's friends. I will say in Spanish just to make it clear. Mis nuevos amigos son los papás de los amigos de mi hijo, Imai. So that gave me a big, big insight. Now, it's going to sound funny, but now I understand why people spend so much money in the children's school. It's not for the education because it's crappy education. It's not for, for sure. It's not for education. It's for entering into a social circle that is the parents of your children's friends. Interesting, right? So if someone wants to start a school or something, always think about this. If you can just improve the quality of parents of your children, now you have a better value of a school. But interesting shit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. You know, Uncle Valet on this audio episode started to jerk enough many times. So remember, if you want to join Inglés para Cholos, you can send me a WhatsApp to my personal number, más 51 9890 23986.